Okay, so let's take a look at the best ever Premier League player from every non-European country. And lads, I'm talking just Premier League, so 1992 onwards. In the other video, I had about a thousand comments asking me where George Best was. Six feet under in a Belfast cemetery. Sorry, of course, Best was a legend, just those comments annoyed me. Anyway, moving on with the video. Algeria, Riyad Mahrez. Okay, so starting off with Algeria, I could have gone with Media Bates, a guy who spent a season at Newcastle displaying the mental fortitude of a dying squirrel, or Hamir Bouaza, a lad who finished stone-cold bottom of the league with Watford. Riyad Mahrez is one of the easiest picks on the list. He's a 60 million pound player, he's already won the league, the PFA Player of the Year award, sorry Islam Slamani, you're not getting this one, Angola, Manucho. Manucho was the human embodiment of a footballing piss stain at both Manchester United and Hull City, soaking up wages every week in exchange for absolutely nothing on the pitch. A goal machine for Angola, he then looked like someone who'd never seen a football before once tossed onto a Premier League pitch, but he's the only Angolan to have ever played in the top flight, so he's probably held up as a pioneer in his homeland. Antigua and Barbuda, Mikel Lekordwood. Yep, Mikel Lekordwood has 11 caps for Antigua and Barbuda, despite having been born in East London and having spent his entire life in England, I think he only declared for Antigua and Barbuda, which honestly just sounds like some sort of cocktail, after he realised he wasn't getting within a horse's whisker of the England team. The midfield there are three spells in top flight with Crystal Palace, Sheffield United and Reading. He got relegated each and every time, so eventually teams just stopped employing him. Argentina, Sergio Aguero. 157 goals, including 10 hat-tricks, and score of arguably the Premier League's most memorable moment. Without a doubt, Man City's record goal scorer makes the list. Australia, Tim Cale. There aren't many more beautiful sights in football than the former Everton man blasting one into the top corner with his head, before showing the corner flag about as much mercy as Floyd Mayweather would his wife. Signed for £2 million in 2004, £2 million, you'd find that in a Premier League owner's shoe. Cale went on to score 56 goals in 226 league games for Everton. Barbados, Emerson Boyce. Again, this fella is from Aylesbury. I have a feeling these small Caribbean islands are just going to be made up of an assortment of terrible English players who didn't have a prayer at hacking it for the country of their actual dreams. Boyce spent a season at Palace during the 04 05 season, lasting seven years in the top flight with Wigan. Benin, Stefan Sessignon. I could have chosen Rudy Gestet or Steve Mounier, but why on God's green earth would I want to? Stefan Sessignon, the former PSG wear, you know, back when they were poor and begging on street corners, spent five years in England with Sunderland West Brom, and now his legacy lives on through his cousin Ryan. Bermuda, Sean Goater. Without a doubt, Sean Goater is the correct answer here. I know he only spent two seasons in the Premier League, but still, if I included someone like Naki Wells over him, Man City fans would have me burned at the stake. Bolivia, Marcelo Moreno. What do you mean you've never heard of Marcelo Moreno? Currently a Jehia Swang ever bright? I'm sure he spends every day regaling his teammates on the time he spent six months on loan at Wigan, stinking the place out in 2010 with precisely zero goals and 12 appearances. I mean, don't worry about it, Marcelo. It's not like you're a striker or anything. Still, though, you find me a better Bolivian to play in the Premier League. That's what I thought. Brazil, Fernandinho. Possibly the most hipster choice in the entire list. I know what you're thinking. Where's Philip Coutinho? Where's Firmino? Where's Kennedy? Hopefully submitting a job application down the post office because clearly football isn't for him. When Fernandinho first arrived at Man City in 2013, I'll admit, I assumed he was just another Fernando, i.e. a bang average midfielder who was going to get Pellegrini sacked. No, he's actually one of the best holding midfielders in world football and without him, Man City look half the team. Burkina Faso, Bertrand Traore. It seems ridiculous to include someone based on 10 Premier League appearances ever, but Bertrand Traore is the only one to have ever flown the Burkino Faso flag in this league. Fair play to him. Burundi Saido Berahino. Well, this just makes a mockery of the entire thing. But Saido Berahino is making it in. This fellow went two years without scoring, and he's in the list of best footballers ever to have played in the Premier League. The only reason he's in here is because his form fell off a cliff. Let's not forget he was sitting on Roy Hodgson's England bench a few years ago. He only switched to the Burundi national team after everyone realised how terrible he'd become. A nearly £20 million signing at Spurs, good lord. He just edges out the mysterious Gale Big Uramana for top spot here, based on that one 20 goal season he had for West Brom that one time, nearly five years ago now. Cameroon, Alex Song. Okay, Sammy Leto is clearly the most high profile Cameroonian to ever play in the Premier League, but he was also way past his best. I'm giving this one to Alex Song. For six years at Arsenal, he was a top creative midfielder and struck up a real on pitch rapport with Rob Van Persie. We won't talk about his time at West Ham. Canada, Thomas Rosinski. I mean, this man is clearly Polish, but hey, Thomas Rosinski is 46 caps for Canada. He was a decent early 2000s striker, netting nearly 40 goals for both Everton and Fulham over a six year period. Cape Verde, Pele. Imagine being a footballer with the name Pele and ending up at West Bromwich Albion. You would just be a walking punchline your whole life. His first name is Pedro, just call yourself that. For Christ's sake, do not walk onto a pitch with the name Pele on your back. Especially if you're just going to wind up playing as a defensive midfielder alongside Jonathan Greening. Chile, Alexis Sanchez. It was a tough choice between Alexis Sanchez and Clarence Acuna, but the former just edged it. Although, if we're talking about his Man United form, I'd rather choose a dirty dish leg. China, Zeng Zi. Sanji Hai would probably be gutted at this, but Zeng Zi was the superior player. The midfielder is over 100 caps and was a strong addition on loan at Charlton 
during the 06 07 season. He was scoring against Newcastle. Did not keep them up though, so maybe Jihai should have gone in here. Colombia, Davinson Sanchez. Okay, this should have been Radamel Falcao. It is a crying shame that it isn't. But hey, you had two chances led and you blew both of them. Davinson Sanchez is a top 40 million pound defender for Tottenham. He makes it in. Congo, Chris Samba. We won't talk about this man's time at QPR when he turned up, pocketed cash, and let's be honest, swallowed bags of KFC before returning back to Russia to no doubt laugh at Tony Fernandez. But for five years of Blackburn, Chris Samba was everything Sam Allardyce would want in a centre half. Costa Rica, Paolo Wancho. 15 goals in two seasons for Man City is probably enough to have you executed in broad daylight these days, but nearly 20 years ago, City fans were lapping that up like a sponge, and Paolo Wancho was giving it to them. He also netted double figures for Derby County and West Ham. Krakow, Cuco Martina. I'll be honest, I didn't even know this country existed, but hey, Cuco Martina is the best from here, I guess. I'm purely just going on that cracker he scored for Southampton against Arsenal a few seasons back. Ecuador, Antonio Valencia. When Man United replaced Cristiano Ronaldo with a lad from Wigan Athletic, I laughed. If someone told me that fellow would still be there 10 years later, I'd have spat out my bowl of muesli. Nearly 400 appearances for Man United, considering he broke his ankle one year into his old traffic career, that is pretty incredible. Egypt, Mohamed Salah. I don't need to explain this one, lads. Who else was I going to put? El Neni? Equatorial Guinea, Pedro Obiang. Yep, as you can see, David Gold, Pedro Obiang is not from Italy, having confused him with Angelo Agbana. No, David, black people don't all look the same. Just ask Liam Neeson. Gabon, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. 25 goals in 37 games, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is clearly the best Gabonese footballer to ever step foot in the Premier League. Although, considering all the trouble he's had at international level, I'm pretty sure he regrets not declaring for France. Gambia, Mo Barrow. Okay, let's be honest, Mo Barrow was not very good for Swansea. The lad had pace, but nothing else. He's only ever played eight times for Gambia, but I had zero other options. Ghana, Michael Essien. Ghana produced some good players for this league, and, you know, Jordan Ayew, but Michael Essien clearly stands tall in this list. Just look at what he won at Chelsea. And just like Santiago Munez, he also got a bit too friendly with the club physio. Granada, Jason Roberts. Jason Roberts' Granada career lasted a decade. He played 12 games, so it was practically just an annual thing. For God's sake, it was probably like a summer holiday to him. Anyway, he's a Premier League journeyman, but scored goals wherever he went. And important ones too. Guinea, Nabi Keita. Look, I know he's only been here five minutes, and Liverpool fans are expecting more, but for his reputation alone, Nabi Keita makes it in. I'm expecting him to prove me right. Guiana, Carl Court. Carl Court, I swear to God, lads, half this list is just made up of D list England players. Actually, no, not even D list. Carl Court, Christ above, we're talking about M or N at this stage. He has six caps, and after a decent three seasons for Wimbledon in the late 90s, injuries pretty much destroyed his Premier League career. Honduras, Wilson Palacios. Wilson Palacios' job at Spurs sounds simple, and it was. Give the ball to Luka Modric. But he did it superbly, and he was a good player at Wigan, too. Iran, Ashkan Dejaga. Okay, Ashkan Dejaga wasn't a world beater, but he was decent. And clearly, he had plans on playing for Germany, considering he played every underage level possible for them. They were relegated during the 13-14 season, but he tried his best with five goals. Did not work. Ivory Coast, Didier Drogba. The easiest choice in the list. I do not care if Wilfred Zaha is Ivorian. I don't care if Yaya Torre will get upset. Drogba is just the clear choice. Jamaica, Wes Morgan. Wes Morgan must have been fuming to have given up on his England dreams in 2013. No doubt reluctantly declaring for the country of his granny. Within three years, Harry Redknapp was calling for his England squad inclusion. He's probably gutted, but small consolation, Wes. It means you make this video. Japan, Shinji Kagawa. Yes, Shinji Kagawa was underwhelming at Man United, but I think I think he's a better player than Junichi Inamoto. As for Hidetoshi Nakata, 10 minutes with Big Sam and the poor lad was already planning his early retirement. Kenya, Victor Wanyama. The only Kenyan and spaghetti enthusiast Victor Wanyama makes the list, no complaints. South Korea, Son Hun Min. Never did I think I'd be making one of these videos and not include Park Ji Sung for South Korea. Christ above, just look at everything he's won. As for Son, he'd probably get excited winning something out of a goddamn gumball machine. Look, Park was a brilliant workhorse, alright, but Son is a diamond. He might just be the closest thing Spurs have had to Gareth Bale, popping up with late winners every week. Mali, Freddy Canute. Sorry, Jimmy Traore, you don't make it in here. Although, to be honest, considering I've included Barry Hino and Carl Court, it's not as if it would have compromised the goddamn integrity of the list. Freddie Canute was a top marksman for both West Ham and Spurs, although turned into some sort of goal scoring demigod in Spain. Mexico, Javier Hernandez. Okay, I'm using the prolific super sub Javier Hernandez of Man United here, not this damp squib of a wreck at West Ham. Morocco, Adel Torat. Arguably the worst professional the Premier League has ever seen, but I don't have much to work with here. Shamak, Bufal, Nabil Elzar, Torat, just take your award and go. New Zealand, Winston Reid. Winston Reid cost West Ham, what, 1 million back in August 2010? He's gone on to play over 200 times for the club and established himself as one of the Premier League's best defenders. Nigeria, Kenu. Nigeria has really emptied some absolute rubbish on this league, but it's also given some gems. Kenu is one, just as Arsenal fans, although Pompey fans probably love him even more. 10 goals in his first season, an FA Cup final winner the next. Oh, and he stayed until 2012, and in the end, let Portsmouth keep the 3 million quid they owed him. Very generous, I mean, my friend still owes me 50 quid, and I've already arranged to have his legs mercilessly beat with a stick. Oh man, Ali Alabzi. Ali Alabzi, the former Bolton and Wigan keeper, I mean, he's the only Omanish, Omanese, Omanian. 
Romanian keeper to have played in the top flight, Pakistan Zesh Raymond. Zesh Raymond was the defender who spent three seasons at Fulham. One year later, he said the players of Asian descent should stick to their roots rather than dreaming of playing for England, telling Michael Chopper to go play for India instead. Paraguay, Rocky Santa Cruz. Some of you might only remember Rocky Santa Cruz for his comedy stylings at Man City, but he did score 23 goals in one season for Blackburn. Peru, and Alberto Solano. I'm not sure why Newcastle sold Solano after six seasons in 2004, but they only ended up buying him back from Aston Villa the next year. The winger also spent time at West Ham. He had virtually no pace, but his delivery, his free kicks at pinpoint accuracy every time. Philippines, Neil Etheridge. Another one from Enfield. Well, Neil Etheridge declared for the Philippines 10 years ago, so he has my respect there. He has 62 caps, no fear of commitment. Unlike Jason Roberts, trading out one game a year, Etheridge is a decent keeper for Cardiff, and you'd think he's destined for a long Premier League career. Mind you, I said that about David Marshall four years ago, and where is he now? Senegal, Sadio Mane. Sadio Mane has scored double digits in the Premier League in each of his five seasons, also netted in the Champions League final. For a winger, these are terrific stats. Sierra Leone, Kei Kamara. One goal and 11 appearances on loan in Norwich. Kei Kamara was verging on useless, but quite clearly, I didn't have much to choose from. South Africa, Stephen Pienaar. Toss up between Stephen Pienaar and Lucas Radaby, but I've gone with the more recent one. He shone in two spells at Everton. Tried to step up the Spurs, and unfortunately was about as much use as wet cabbage. Still a fine player though. Togo, Emmanuel Adebayor. Emmanuel Adebayor is virtually no competition, but still on his day he was boarding on world class. Trinidad and Tobago, Dwight York. 123 Premier League goals. That is a record for someone from North America. Tunisia, Radi Jaddy. Well, Tunisia have unloaded a bunch of rubbish on this division, but Radi Jaddy was a decent centre back for Bolton, who'd pop up with the odd crucial goal here and there. USA, Brad Friedel. So Clint Dempsey is the obvious choice, but look, Brad Friedel's spent nearly 20 years in England with Liverpool, Blackburn, Aston Villa and for God's sake, he was keeping Hugo Lloris out of the Spurs team of 40 years of age. Uruguay, Luis Suarez. No explanation needed. Venezuela, Salomon Rondon. Salomon Rondon has spent the last four years feeding off scraps, but he does it so well. A big bullish target man that Newcastle centre forward needs to be tied down permanently. Zambia, Emmanuel Mayuka. Remember Emmanuel Mayuka? He was the top scorer of the African Cup of Nations in 2012. Then Southampton signed him, and he subsequently scored a big fat nothing in 16 games. Lads, never judge players in international tournaments, alright? Otherwise, Milan Barris would have ended up in the same team as Zidane. Zimbabwe, Bruce Grobbler. And finishing up the list is not Benjani, not. Bruce Grabbler, who hung in at Liverpool and then Southampton for a few Premier League years between the sticks in the 90s. I'll be honest, I didn't know that man was Zimbabwean, although he actually came out of retirement last summer to play in goal for Machabaland, which is the western part of Zimbabwe, in a game against Chagos Islands at 60 years of age. They always say goalies were insane, but Jesus Christ. 